You can tell me not to stand in a public place? I, tell you you're I don't think you can. Why are you harassing people? Who's harassing anybody? Flagler County Commission Chair Joe Mullins and a fellow commissioner's wife get into an argument at an early voting site outside the Flagler County Library over the weekend. Mullins and his teenage campaign workers had wanted to put his campaign signs at a Republican club tent managed by Linda Hansen, wife of Commissioner Greg Hansen. Linda Hansen tells WNZF why it wasn't permitted. It was a Republican club booth and he is not a member. He approached in a hostile manner and said, I'm going to put my signs in here. And I said, I'm afraid I'm not supposed to let you do that. And he became belligerent pretty quickly. And I asked him to please step away from the booth because he was angry. And he said, I have every right to be here. He was getting louder and louder. And I said, yes, you do. But you don't have a right to stand here and harass people. Over this. Mullins responded to WNZF. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding and emotions, but being a member of the Republican Party, and I support them very strongly, we all have rights. It wasn't just me. It was a couple of other candidates they were excluding. We all have the right to be represented as Republicans, and they cannot endorse any particular candidate. Mullins had also directed some of his team campaign workers to video the whole thing and other scenes at the voting site to Hansen's objection. That caused more tension. Flagler County deputies were eventually called to the scene and found no crime, just arguing. Hansen, who says she never felt threatened, says she plans to address the issue of voter harassment and voter intimidation with the supervisor of elections. It was really inappropriate. It was unfortunate that the entire thing happened. This community is better than this. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. It was a busy weekend for the Flagler County Commission Chair. Mullins also assisted in putting a suspected drug dealer behind bars. A random text message sent to Flagler County Commissioner Joe Mullins has ended with 18-year-old Jack Fisher in handcuffs. Commissioner Mullins. You know, I get an anonymous phone call yesterday um, from some guy that said, hey man, I got something you wanted a few days ago. And I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, I got that eight ball. And I went, I think you have the wrong number. And we hung up on him immediately. I started thinking about it. I called Mark Strobridge with our Flagler County Sheriff's Office, and he immediately put his guys on it. And between about five hours of texting back and forth, we were able to apprehend the guy and uh, have him arrested when we got drugs off the street. And we, hopefully this individual will get some help. And ironically, I celebrate 11 years of recovery tomorrow from uh, drugs and alcohol in this very incident. So um, it's, it's a great feeling for a birthday gift to have this off the streets that could potentially kill and hurt our community. Prior to this incident, Fisher was booked in Flagler County last April on misdemeanor charges of alcohol possession by a person under the age of 21 and marijuana possession too. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. So anyone out there right now who has just moved to the area, we need you. We do have some vacancies in a number of our schools. Flagler County is not immune to the teacher shortage that's hit schools nationwide. Superintendent Kathy Middlestadt tells WNZF they have 17 educator openings. Unfortunately, as it's closer to the start of school, that's when our principals start to get nervous because we have to put an adult in front of every single kid in a classroom. So we do have some substitute teachers that we'll be leaning on and getting them engaged. But we do have some vacancies. We also need paraprofessionals. Those are teacher aides in the classroom, and they're such a valuable asset to how a teacher works with small group learning and doing some different things that are very creative in a classroom. Paraprofessionals require an associate degree. Out-of-state educators are welcome, too, and the district will help them get the certification they need to start teaching in Flagler County. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. Home ownership is becoming increasingly unattainable in Palm Coast. Senior planner Jose Papa of the city's Community Development Department presented housing cost statistics to the city council from the 2020 American Community Survey. 61% of all households that, that are earning 80% or less of the area median income are cost burdened. That is, they pay 30% or more for rent or mortgage payment. So I, I think it's obvious that uh, maybe the if your household income is not as, doesn't quite match up to the area median income, the amount of your income that you need to pay for rent or mortgage is going to take up more of that income. And the impact goes beyond high housing costs. These cost burden households have a certain vulnerability to financial distress or homelessness. And that occurs when, should a sudden emergency expense occur, whether it's health care, significant home repair, 
or a sudden rent increase that, as we've seen or as we've heard anecdotally, but probably is true in recent times. According to the 2021 census estimate, Palm Coast residents making below $46,000 a year are considered moderate to low income. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. Former Palm Coast Mayor Melissa Holland said shortly after his death in March that Joe Rizzo was a fierce and tireless advocate for education in Flagler County. With that, Joe Rizzo's wife Teresa said she has some big shoes to fill as the Flagler County Ed Foundation's new executive director. Stepping into his shoes with his flair has definitely been uh, a huge leap, but I'm excited for the leap. I'm excited for the opportunity to continue to sustain what he created this wonderful foundation, but then to elevate it to the next level. Teresa Rizzo said that her family would carry on Joe's work, as she said that even her children say it's important work in Flagler County. You can listen to Lifeline, where we interviewed Teresa Rizzo on Saturday mornings at 9 here on WNZF or anytime on the Flagler Radio app. Tomorrow, who was Joe Rizzo? From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.